And since it's a Thursday on the Bold Republic Radio Show, we head on down to Cheyenne where Maureen is waiting on the phone right now. Maureen, I think I have a problem in our office that we're going to send to yours, and that is that the Halloween candy has arrived. Uh Uh-oh, that's trouble. Yeah, so I'm going to box it all and just send it down to you guys because I'm sure in the offices of Wyoming Liberty Group it will be devoured probably within a couple of days. Yeah, that's probably true. It's probably true. Unfortunately, we have our own supply, and that that's always bad news for the hips. Oh, know? just send it to the capital then, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably a good true. idea. They'll devour that kind of stuff. <laughs> Maureen has been working on ta- some tax ideas uh, for the state of Wyoming, including Maureen. We have a debate going on up here in Campbell County about some of the ways that we're taxed. One percent tax is one of them, but that's not the only one you've been working on. What have you discovered? Well, I think what we should maybe have to start is a little bit of a broader discussion about sales sales tax in general. One of the things I don't know if people really understand is that the total amount of sales tax that, that goes into <coughs> the state's general fund, so that's their that's essentially their spending account, is actually larger than the amount of severance tax revenue that goes into the general fund. Now, the total severance tax revenue collection is actually higher than the sales tax collection, but a lot of that severance tax goes to all what, what, the, uh, what the politicians themselves call their little coffee cans, like the Permanent Mineral Trust Fund, some water development account, the budget reserve account, and, and, and on and on. So, the, But the amount of money that the state has to actually spend on agency spending, like like the the health agency and the education department and the tourism department and all that, is, is that the most of that the largest percentage of that comes from the sales tax. So Wyoming, what Wyoming actually does is impose a four percent sales tax. Sixty nine percent of that revenue goes to the state's general fund, as I mentioned, and the rest of that, or about thirty one percent, gets distributed out to local governments within the county of origin. But it's mainly based on on population. Now, sales across the state, and in particular in Campbell County, but not in every county, sales tax revenue is falling. Sales tax revenue statewide, on average, fell by about 4.2% in 2013 from 2012. And, and then, as I mentioned, that is a pretty big deal because a lot of the state's spending is financed through sales tax. Now, what what's important about this, and what also is actually pretty critical for Campbell County, is that one of the largest sales tax payers is in fact the minerals industry. It accounts for about 18% of all of that revenue that we just talked about. So uh, the, the, we, about three quarters of the drop in sales tax collection was due to lower sales in the mining and wholesale hotel trade sectors. Retail, which is in fact the largest single collector of sales tax, which accounts for about 23% of collections, um, it was also down. And or, no, it, was, it was up just a little weeny bit, but it didn't dampen this great big drop in the in the mining sector. Well, let's let's explain for people when you say the mining industry pays the most in sales tax. Uh, how are they paying that in tax? What are they purchasing? Where they they end up? They buy much? equipment. They buy yeah. equipment. Um, any kind of service that you're going to pay a tax on. So anything that the mineral the minerals industry actually purchases and 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 even if they purchase it out of state and bring it in, they still get hit with a sales tax. It's called a use tax here, but but it's still a, essentially a sales tax. And, Let's, so and, the, and I don't want to get you off track here, but for those people who don't know what the use tax is, explain that because I when I got here I thought that's fascinating. I didn't know if I've ever heard of that before, but how does this work? So a use tax. So so okay. So in Campbell County, for instance, you pay the four percent sales tax, the 1% general purpose tax, and a 1% specific purpose tax, and we can get into details about that later. So that's a 6% sales tax. Now, that not including the 2% lodging tax. I mean, the, I'll tell you, the government will get you every single way. You, you, you have no idea. So for that 6%, so say, for instance, uh, somebody buys something in another state that maybe has uh, a 4% sales tax, and they bring it into the state. They bring this great, huge mining machine, you know, whatever they use there. Uh, they bring it into the state. They've actually paid less sales tax. So the government in, in Campbell County is still going to hit you up for that difference in the sales tax. So you're still going to pay, you'll still pay a total of 6% sales tax no matter where you buy your your equipment. Okay. That's what they use. That's what the, but they don't actually call it a sort of a sales tax differential or anything. They call it a use tax. Okay. So one way or the other, they hit you with it. Then. Uh, you're oh. going to get it. That's yeah. it. It's to prevent tax uh, sales tax avoidance is essentially what that's all about. Okay. So so in Campbell County, for instance, you you do have what they call a 1% general purpose tax. 
Now, back in 1973, counties in Wyoming were able to start imposing this additional 1% sales tax if it was approved by the public. And that's where this idea that it is an optional sales tax comes up. It, it started by, I think in Campbell County, they also started back probably in about 1973 with this. I'm not totally sure about that. But so every single couple of years, it comes up on the ballot, and people have to say, yes, we, con- we want to continue paying this, this additional tax. Now, not every single county charges that additional tax. You've got Fremont, Park, and Sublet don't, they don't uh, impose this additional tax, this additional what's called a general purpose tax. Now, that general purpose tax has uh, also been falling in re- the revenue, and that one has also been falling. Um, if you look at, it was pretty high back in, uh, in 2009 when, when the revenue from that was about $13 million. So, I mean, it's not some change what comes in from this, this additional tax. And it fluctuated around a bit, but is now down to about $9.7 million. And th- so, so you've got falling sales tax revenue in Campbell County because, again, the largest payer of sales tax in Campbell County is the, the, the mining industry, unlike some other places where it's the retail industry. That, that's falling off. The general purpose tax revenue is falling off. So then, I think it was in 2011, the, the, the you know, fathers at uh, the, the county commission decided that, oh, gee, well, let's have a, a specific purpose tax because the state also allows counties to add an additional 1% sales tax known as a specific purpose or capital facility options tax. And that's supposed to be for capital improvements. And so by the end of June 2013, the city of Gillette had received about $42.4 million, and the town of Wright and Wright Water and Sewer District received about almost $7 million. So that started in, in 2011. So, so don't think that you know, you're, not, you're not paying a lot of tax, because you, in fact, are. Now, the problem, and a lot, what a lot of people talk about all the time, is where is that money being spent? Well, a lot of the money, about uh, here are this thing, about 20 million, 21, 21 to 25 million, goes to essentially what I consider to be welfare projects or welfare spending. You've got recreation projects at about 3.3 million, and you got to really ask yourself: Should the county or any city be building these these great big recreation center complex things? Because they they tend to be white elephants. They're very costly. You know, anything run by government tends to cost more because not only do you have what they consider to be <coughs> competitive salaries, you need to add to that about another 50% that covers off the cost of benefits. And, and if we have time later, we can get into a little bit on, on the retirement benefits that that uh, state employees, state and county and city and uh, school district employees receive. Mm. It, and it, then the it, cost of maintaining and running these facilities, because we have this, what they're calling the field of dreams, I call the field of broke, which <laughs> is astronomically expensive to build, but what they don't include in the prices, how much is it going to cost to maintain the thing every single year? So in other words, they've decided to go out to this massive field, dig a big hole, and every year we're supposed to dump millions into it and then thank them for it. Yeah, exactly. And and. But this is part of, and you see this everywhere. It's not just not just in Gillette, not just in Campbell County, and not just in Wyoming either, but everywhere. You have politicians standing up on a podium talking about how great this is going to be. You know, whatever it is they're going to build, they're going. It's going to bring in all these people. It's going to increase, you know, tourism revenue. It's going to be good for small business. But what they don't say on the other side is how much it's going to cost. How how bad the cost overrun is likely going to be? Right. How much it's going to cost, like you say, to maintain this thing every single year? And you know you can look at data from from different taxing jurisdictions, especially some of the higher taxing jurisdictions. And if you compare, say, a facility, a sports facility run by government, and a sports facility run by a YMCA or one of these sort of private organizations, costs tend to be significantly lower. And part of the reason for that, of course, is the is the benefit cost. And also, you know, you just tend to need fewer people at a private sector organization because people tend to be a little bit more motivated because if they don't do a good job, they'll go out of business, they'll lose their job. If government doesn't do a bad job, they get more money. Right. If the, if the government does a bad job, they get more money, right? So that this is sort of the this is the problem and and, and that sort of thing. All right. Now you and I were in an interesting discussion before the program here about how you tax because you know for example uh far as i'm concerned there should never be any such thing as a property tax if you own a home and you've paid for that home why are you paying the government rent for it year after year 
So while on the one hand, I think you and I agree that the government should not be doing nearly as much as it's doing, so let's reduce the size of government to a few basic functions. What is the best way to collect tax for the few functions that government should be doing? Well, one of the things we need to think about exactly is what, sh- is what should government be doing? Now, well, the problem with the property tax is that it's considered to be a wealth tax. And it doesn't necessarily pay for, in fact, it charges a lot more than the services that you're actually receiving. I mean, I don't think anyone would disagree, at least most people wouldn't disagree, that you really should pay for the services that you receive. So, you know, you have your property, you have a street in front of it. If it's not a private, you know, even if it were a private street, you'd still have to pay something for that street. So you need to pay something for the street maintenance. You're getting water, you're getting light, you're getting sewer, you're getting all these services. Certainly people should pay for that. But what happens, and especially this is, this is what was happening in California back in the 70s before Proposition 13, is that you'd have these seniors or these people that in the 1940s bought a house for $4,000. They're now seniors on a fixed income. Their, their house is worth maybe $4 million. And they're getting taxed a property tax on that $4 million. To, and the only reason it's $4 million now and not, not $4,000 anymore is just because of the, the, you know, the, the demand for land in these particular places. And a lot of times... Higher property costs are due to land shortages, which is a result of government government program, but you know government policies. But this is a whole other issue. So that's the problem with property taxes: is it can it can tend to drive, as was happening in California, senior citizens out of their homes. So if you were to get, I would certainly be, I would certainly be happy to see the property tax go away. We feel we do need to understand that then what we would need to replace that with are fees fees for service. And the fees for service should cover the charge of that service, not have all this extra left over to pay for things like like municipal golf courses. Because certainly the sport of kings, for instance, is not something that that your uh, Joe taxpayer should be forced to fund through his through his um, through his property tax. So what you need to think about, so when we think about what's what's the best tax, one of the, one of the things we need to think about is any time ta- any tax is bad, it's going to have a negative effect. Anything you tax, you're going to get less of. So income tax is by far the worst possible tax that you can have because what you're, what you're really doing is creating a disincentive to work. But what we really need to have more and more, especially as we have more and more retirees, is we need to increase the incentives to work, save, and invest. So the fact that we have no income tax here is a really good thing. The problem with a sales tax is if, you, if you've ever read Murray Rothbard or uh, understand anything or have ever, ever done any reading about the, uh, from, from the Austrian School of Economics, like Louis von Mises and, and these people, is, is what, what Murray Rothbard explains in his book Power and Markets is that when you have a, a sales tax, what you actually have for the consumer is, some, is a price for the good or service that is higher. They don't necessarily differentiate between the, the, co- the price of the good and the tax. So what can happen, especially for small businesses, is that if the tax goes up, so this additional 1% tax, for instance, what, is that, what that could force them to do is to reduce their, their costs. So they're reducing their margins. They're actually making less money because they have to reduce the co- or they have to either keep the cost to the consumer the same or they need, to reduce the co- they need to reduce what they're getting back because they have to give more money to the government. This, you know, is sometimes if you look to see who is really supporting these higher sales taxes, a lot of times they're bigger companies because they know what they can be doing is driving up the costs to these smaller businesses, and that is going to put their, com- their competitors out of business. So we definitely don't – I mean, if, p- if people really start thinking about this 1% sales tax and where that money is going and where it's coming from, because, of course, it's now going to spend on things that the government wants instead of stuff that you want, they would really think twice about uh, reapproving this 1% sales tax. <laughs> Here's the interesting turnabout in uh, Campbell County with our 1% tax is there's people up here who are all in favor of it because the city is saying, hey, look, you know, you raise the 1% tax. We're going to fill potholes. We're going to take care of these curbs. There's all these city improvement projects that we're going to do that are beneficial, necessary projects. And you, the citizens, get to vote on not just the tax, but tell us what we're going to do with the tax. But that frees up other money, Maureen. All of a sudden, there was other money lying around that they were spending on those projects. They're now free to open up a bunch of useless parks and other such money pits. And that's been the argument here in Gillette about the 1% sales tax. 
Well, that's exactly right. As more and more of these little taxes get added here and there, then that that leaves then the money that they should have been spending on roads and and policing and fire and the engineer and and these other things. Then suddenly that that money is opened up. So a lot of times, especially when you've got the specific tax, which is the the capital facilities tax, that one definitely has to go to certain things. But now that money is going to that thing. So so you've got this other money that used to go to that that stuff, and now it's going somewhere else. So you what you're seeing is this increase in tax revenue. Now, this is another thing I think people really need to understand. You're not actually talking about a tax increase. You're talking about the continuation of an, an optional tax, one that you don't actually have to pay if you were to vote no. What is a good way, first of all, we have to, re, because, you know, the more the taxes is, let's face it, the more taxes they raise, the bigger the government gets. As far exactly. as, I mean, this is the way I always see it. We need more money to get the following projects done, but as soon as we raise the taxes, we end up with more government. So mm-hmm. how do we back mm-hmm. it off, and what kind of tax would you put into play? That would be, well, I guess, what you were talking about earlier, which is you just pay for what you need. But how do you pay for a pothole down Main Street, let's say? Well, you know, what the, uh, I mean, this is pretty radical, and this is not something that the Wyoming Liberty Group is is uh, promoting or endorsing. Mm-hmm. This is more just uh, based on on, on certain studies that I've made of, of places, of things that you could potentially do. Okay. Because what uh, where I was actually going with that other thing is that just because you increase tax revenue, tax rates does not mean that you're going to increase tax revenue because there's sort of an optimal level of, of taxation, and eventually people are just going to stop doing whatever it is that. Yeah results in a tax burden. That's but the laugher know, what, curve. Yeah, basically. But, yeah. you know, one of the things that... Uh, you remember uh, the, and last summer I was at the Objectivist Conference and we were talking about the theories of Ayn Rand mm-hmm. and then getting back to Murray Rothbard from the the Austrian School of Economics. One of the things that they talk about, and especially Ayn Rand talks about, is paying a voluntary tax, to make tax truly voluntary. And, you know, you get people like Harry Reid and, and other politicians who think this is a completely preposterous idea, that pe- there's no way anyone would pay for a tax. Well, that's, that's, not, that's not actually true, you know, because we would pay a tax for the things that we actually value. You know, a lot of people are paying for private security. Why? Because they don't feel that the public police are protecting them well enough. So, in other words, people are, in fact, willing to pay for security if they feel that it's something that's going to actually protect them instead of what happens with the police a lot of times is they buy used military equipment and start driving around in, in <laughs> yeah. driving around the streets in, in armored you know armored personnel carriers and it's just completely ridiculous. So one of the things that people need to start thinking about is how can we actually shrink especially local governments back down to get them to focus on their core activities, how can we start doing more pay for pay for service? So, in other words, you you pay for the service that you, you you receive, and you stop having to pay all this extra for all these other things that you don't want to have, like a like a golf course or a you know, sports facility or any of this right. other stuff that the government is wasting money you on. You just have to make sure to set it up in a way because if you've ever lived in a neighborhood that has a homeowners association, there's always those homeowners that don't pay their monthly dues, which were supposed to go to filling potholes. So you have to set it up in a way that you're paying for the service that you're getting at the time. Yeah, that's right. Pay as you go and not pay a lot of extra for stuff that you that you don't really want, like welfare payments to other people. For yeah, for example, yeah. Okay, Maureen, you've written some articles about this. Where do they find you? Yeah, please go to our website, wyliberty.org. I've been writing especially about the lodging tax, which you also pay in Campbell County. And don't think that you're not paying it because you uh, only other, other people pay it. You are. So you, these are all these things that you have a chance to get rid of if you're actually active dr- and, and think about it during election time. All right. Thank you, Maureen. You're welcome. See you next time.